What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 32 and in today's episode we are starting our third season with Paris FC here in Club and Country. On the back of that fantastic second season in this series where we finished in third place in our first season in Ligue 1. Which meant we are into the Champions League for this season subject to a qualifier. Uh, the objective for this season in the league is to once again qualify for the Champions League which I think we can definitely do after doing it last season. In the domestic cup we need to reach around a 32 stage and our season's budget this year is dun 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 9.5 million pounds and 45 grand on the wage budget so nine and a half million pounds for upcoming season and we need to qualify with the Champions League once again and reached around a 32 in the cup which I do believe we start off in anyway if not then at least one round uh, prior to that but I'm pretty sure it's around a 32 anyway but uh, still we also get ourselves into a, uh, into a, uh, a pre-season tournament uh, we chose the one with the most prize money as per usual and it also started off with some training as well for Thierry Ambrose and Barmy as well. So £9.5 million uh, to sign new players with for our upcoming season, the third one with Paris SC. As you can see, though, we've already got five new players coming in right from the beginning. Uh, sorry, four new players even. Four new players coming in right from the beginning on pre-contracts. Uh, of course, if you missed uh, quite a lot of last season, then basically during the January transfer window, we managed to wrap up four deals for four players on pre-contracts. And you'll see the stats of those players right here. Uh, the first one is Chen Kua, uh, a 67 overall 24 year old right midfielder who comes in low wages, a good score player I'd say so I'm happy with that one. Uh, Kevin May just like Chen Kua, 69 overall uh, two, uh, two ratings higher but uh, 24 years old as well and again a bit of a score player this one here, we'll take him anyway uh, also Bujedra on very low wages only 2.8 grand a week, 23 years old, 69 overall but of course the headline one on a pre-contract was this guy right here Pound J, uh, the left back we got from Bordeaux, 77 overall, 24 years old valued at 4.4 million pounds but he's going to go straight to the first team got some really really good stats and I'm very happy with his acquisition but he is on 25 grand a week and is now our highest earner at the club so Pound J uh, being a pick of those four pre-contract players there mainly those three Mei Chen Kua and Bujedra will be squad players or bench players at best but Pound J is going to go straight in the first team and I know last season we were playing the three at the back which I really wanted to play some of you guys didn't like that so for this season what I'm going to do is change formation once again for the third time well, I keep uh, messing with winning formula, I don't know. But uh, some of you guys didn't like the free at the back formation last year, so we'll change it this time for you. And we'll play a four at the back. I'm going to play a 4 3 3 attack this year. I'll show you the team lineup. That does mean that Pound J goes into the team as opposed to be on the bench, which is fair enough for being our highest earner and uh, one of our best players. And the team currently looks like this to start the new season. So St. Maximi is going to get pushed up to the left wing role. Uh, Dembele, for the time being, will start on the right wing. Ambrose is the lone striker. And of course, Boger is the attacking midfielder. And you would have seen Yannick in there as well. Yannick, of course could be one of the biggest stars of this Paris SC side as an academy graduate 17 years old yeah, you know you saw his stats in the last episode on the end of the season when we promoted him looks really really good and I'm so excited to see how he does for us this season but for signings for Paris SC with nine and a half million pounds not really sure where to strengthen but of course we do switch this 4-3-3 attack we'll need someone to play right wing now I know Thierry Ambrose could be drifted out there but to be honest we know Ambrose is not going to be satisfied playing on the wing you know he's a striker through and through in my eyes a natural finisher in this game Game. He scored 29 goals last year, 37 in the first season in the league. That's a combined total of uh, 56 goals in two seasons in the league. We can't drift him out to the wing. We can't isolate him on the wing. He needs to be playing up top and in the striker role. So he's going to stay as a striker. We'll look for a winger. And Thomas Lamar may be the guy we'll be signing because Monaco accepted a bid of £4.3 million right from the beginning. And we offer him a contract and we shall wait and see what he says because I, I would say right wing is probably the area we should be looking to strengthen anyway. Getting in a really class winger is always helpful. And Lamar's got some really decent stats. He's only 21 years old, 75 overall to begin with he would be a really good signing for us for his valuation uh, West Ham want Barmy though how about this a big transfer to start the new season off West Ham want to take Barmy to Hudson Park but I was like god no it's just, it can't happen 17 million pounds is what they offered for our young goalkeeper the 18 year old but he's 80 overall he is a future star there's there's no way we're getting rid of Barmy because 17 million pounds is just absurd what a massive bid that is for an academy player but I just don't want to sell him he's just too good for starters an 18 years old already 80 
overall. I know that's all because of my training, but I just I, I can't see him go, you know, anywhere, let alone Upton Park. So he's staying here at Paris FC, and that's fine with me. Uh, Fabian McGill may be on his way to Bayern Munich, though. Uh, we ask for £6 million and we'll wait and see what they say. And also, St. Etienne want to buy Boga. He led the league in assists last season with 15, though, and I really like him. So he's going to be staying here as we reject that bid. But uh, Lamar declined the first contract uh, we offered him, which is kind of frustrating. So we have to give him a, uh, another squad role, uh, given the important first team player stats, and wait and see what he says. He would be a really good signing. And for his valuation at £4.3 million, pounds, I think that would be an absolute bargain because at 21 years old, 75 overall, even if he doesn't grow, which obviously hopefully he will, but even if he doesn't grow, we could still sell him on for a profit, probably. So I'm fine with that deal. If it does come off, I'll be very happy. But Bayern aren't going to match a £6 million counter offer for Miguel. That's fine with me. We'll keep him here as a backup goalkeeper, and I'm okay with that. And also, a big came in for Thierry Ambrose here. Sporting want to take Ambrose to Portugal, but I was like, no way, man. Seriously, 56 goals in two years. The guy is clinical as hell. He's going nowhere. He may not be growing. He'll only grow when I train him right now, but I'm, I'm fine keeping him here because he's one of those players who plays way better than his rating suggests. His finishing ability, I mean, I'll say this right now. I think I've said it before already. He's one of the best natural finishers I've ever used in FIFA. He's unbelievable in going through one-on-one. -on -one. But either way, he'll be staying, and that's the end of that. But uh, also as well, in the preseason tournament, you just, you just saw we won the first game against Cagliari, but then we lost the uh, last two against Red Bull Salzburg and also uh, Addo Den Haag, the uh, Dutch side. So we're actually out of the preseason tournament in the group stage, finishing rock bottom of the group despite winning the first game. So how about that? Don't get much money for it, but to be honest, preseason tournaments, they're a nice little feature for this year. If you want to take them seriously, that's cool. But for me, they're still something I'm not really too fussed about. But uh, Dussot, uh, the five-star skiller uh, academy graduate, is on his way to Scunfort for a two-year loan deal. He's nowhere near good enough for the team right now, so we can go to England and get some game time, and I'm fine with that. And also, Nice wanted to buy back Boscagli to their side for £7.5 million. We said no, though. He's only 18. It's 77 overall already. Really like him as a centre-back. Can also play left-back as well. We're keeping him here. But also, Lamar. Uh, it turns out there is justice in as well, because Lamar does indeed accept his third contract. No one's going to get that, are they? Uh, Lamar's going to come in uh, for 30 grand a week on a 4.3 million pound deal. Very, very happy with that. And again, even if he doesn't grow, we could still sell him on for a profit. £4.3 million. Pounds. It may be quite expensive, and it's our biggest signing to date so far, but I'm very happy with that. He is our highest earner as well. You can see his stats right here. Looks really, really good. Quick winger. Got some good technical ability. And also as well, because he's left-footed too, and will be playing right wing, he can cut in and shoot on his left, just like St. Maximin can cut in from the left and shoot on his right. So I'm looking forward to that very dangerous trio up top of St. Maximin, Ambrose, and also Lamar as well. So really pleased with that signing and you know again 4.3 million pounds it is the most expensive deal so far 30 grand a week but we're not little Paris FC anymore in the French second tier with Paris FC that this year subject to a qualifier may be playing Champions League football in the group stage you know we, we've got to start making those signings now it's all well and good signing those pre-contract players and buying these low rated players and trying to develop them but we also need to start spending some money you know spending some real money splashing the cash and that's exactly what we've done and also in today's episode guys you are going to see the first game of the new season uh, in the Liga and the Liga and opening day. Now, usually when it's the first episode of a new season, you guys know that we just do transfer business and save the first game until the second episode of the new season. But today, you are going to see the first game. The reason being is quite simple. I didn't have enough time to make the 10-minute threshold I like to make for most of my episodes. So because of that, I thought I'd play the first game. You saw the transfer list right there. I've got, I think it's four, possibly five players currently on the transfer list right now. The, the squad players, the aging players, we don't really want or need at this club anymore. But I got no bids for them whatsoever. We've got bids for players like Boga and Ambrose and Barmy to start the season off, but those are players we weren't going to sell. But for all those players on the transfer list, I got them all there. Not a single bid came in for any of them. And I know that I've got history with failing to sell and loan out players, but not a single transfer offer came in for any of those players on the transfer list right now, which is really frustrating. But uh, still, for the first game of today's episode, the opening day of the new league and season, we take on Nice here at home as we look to get an opening day victory, something we couldn't do last season. And we take the lead in this game in the 34th minute through St. Maximin scoring one of the dodgiest goals of the season. The shot was saved initially and then as it trickled over the line Thierry Ambrose and the Nice defender both tried to get the ball well Ambrose across the line, the Nice defender off the line and the goalkeeper then jumped over the Nice defender and then sort of kneed the ball away but it was already over the line as you can see by the goal decision system here. Just look what happens here with Ambrose and the Nice defender. Ambrose stops the Nice defender from clearing the ball and Ambrose may not have scored the goal he won 
wanted it. It doesn't go down as his goal because he didn't make any contact, but he sort of helped the ball cross the line and trickle over it, really, by preventing the Nice defender from clearing the ball away. So a foul by Ambrose, possibly not too sure. I think it was just a natural coming together and accidental. That's what Ambrose will tell you anyway. And it was still, uh, sorry, it was there now Paris FC 1, Nice 0. And we had a chance to make it 2 0 there, but May was denied his first goal for the club by a good save with a goalkeeper. But we would get our second goal in stoppage time. Tristan Dingome comes off the bench and heads in this Boga corner to make it Paris FC 2, Nice 0, and wrap up the three points. Tristan now going to be a squad player. He was a first team player last season after signing on a pre contract. He played quite well last year, and now he's going to drop to the bench. But he comes off the bench in this game to come on and score the second goal of the game in stoppage time and ensure we do have an opening day victory after heading in a Boga corner. So an opening day assist for Boga. He got 15 last season, hopefully more to come uh, this year. A really good display though in this game. We were defensively very solid. We should have scored more goals, in all honesty. We won the game with two goals nil. That's the most important thing. And good to get a win on the opening day of the league and season. But that does in the episode though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the first episode of the third season of Club and Country, then please leave likes. That is, of course, much appreciated. And really is much channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.